Well, Coach, it's great to meet you. Welcome to the sports page. Uh, maybe we should start by getting to know you a little bit. Okay. Um, okay, so this is a weird part. This is my, my journey to Michigan has been uh, has been a long one. Uh, I grew up in southern Indiana. I was born in Bedford, Indiana, really close to Bloomington, which is uh, close to Indiana University. So southern Indiana, right by – I was raised in Pekin, Indiana, right by the Kentucky border. Um, so that's why, especially if you come to games and you hear me getting loud, uh, you might hear a little bit of a twang come back and – everything uh especially when i'm not thinking and try to hide my accent because uh it's definitely it's definitely different uh definitely different than people sound up here so i sound a little funny um so growing up in southern indiana basketball is like uh it's like a second religion like there's 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 the religion part and there's basketball religion and they're supposed to both be like right next to each other that's that's how (laughs) basketball is where i'm from um and then uh, I was lucky enough. I was a, uh, I loved basketball. And I was really good at it right here, and I was pretty good at it in person. But I was better at football, um, so I got a scholarship to come play football at Hillsdale to be a safety. And I went to Hillsdale, um, transferred to Alma College, and when I was a student, I met my wife, um, and my wife was she was a Felposh, so Sarah Felposh, and uh, she, I'm an only kid and. As when I met her, I knew I was going to marry her, and I loved her family, and here I am. So now I've got a, I got, I got a wife. I got two kids, a three-year-old daughter named Brindley, and my son Jackson is going to be uh, one here next month. So we just built our house out here, so I'm a, I'm a lifer now. <laughs> well, welcome to St. John's. It sounds like you got a busy thing going on there. What, uh, yeah, what started, what started in coaching? And what, what led you to the head coaching uh, job? Really, honestly, the, the reason I, I love the game of basketball. I like how it's um, it's a little bit different than a, a lot of other sports in the fact that that you can't stop it. I mean, you can as a coach, you can call some timeouts, but it's really all just about teaching, and which is what I am. I'm an English teacher. I'm a, I'm a, it's just what I've always kind of been, I've gravitated to is, is leading through teaching and then and then watching it happen. I mean, you, can, you can't control much on the sideline of basketball. It's very different than a play clock, you know, where you get to call a play every single play and you can dial up this stuff. And basketball is, is uh, it's different. It's, it's like jazz music. Um, whereas your other sports can be kind of like rock and roll and you can set this cadence and you can change the beat based on, uh, based on what plays you call and what style you want to go with. But basketball is jazz. It's the ebbs and flows. And really, you're just kind of on – you're just kind of on the ride. Um, so uh, I love the sport. And then I actually had a really, really amazing uh, varsity basketball coach in my tiny little town of, of Pekin. So very good but rich basketball culture. Um, I mean, my basketball coach was at my elementary school games growing up, my, my varsity coach, uh, just the way the way things were. Um, he was kind of like a, a dad me, um, taught me a lot of things that I wasn't learning at home. And uh, he actually, you know, I was at his house a lot, you know, just growing growing as a young man. And he was having me over and have, helping me babysit his kids. And, I mean, just stuff that you do as an adult to – bring in a young man and try to help shape him and mold him into the person that he could be instead of the person that he is. Um, his name's Scott Newcomb. He was actually my, my uh, varsity basketball coach and he was my athletic director too. So uh, when I when I got done with my playing career at Alma, uh, I was a student teacher at Bath and I immediately was like, all right, let's do this. Let's start coaching. So I was an assistant varsity basketball coach there for two years and then I got a I got a teaching job at Bath in, the, in elementary school. So I actually it was, I was, again, assistant varsity basketball coach for a second year there. And then I started coaching uh, football. And then I saw a chance to uh, be a freshman coach at St. John's, be five years ago. And I was like, all right, I, I want to run my own team. My wife's from there. That's where we got land. We're going to build a house up there. Let's, let's do it. And so started coaching freshman basketball and then, job opening came up and I applied for it and they, they chose me. So, and my journey started here. 
Awesome. Well, you look too young to have all that kind of coaching experience already. But uh... <laughs> uh, I'm not that young. I think I'm an, no. I'm an old man at heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, what, what are the main goals for the for the season? Uh, you know, how would you define success kind of thing? Um, look, I, I'm not trying to shortchange you on a, on a real answer, but I'm serious when I tell you this. I, I, I believe when I tell you that I'll tell you if we're successful in 20 years that whenever those young men become fathers or just working people, uh, husbands um, or not, whatever, whichever path they go down, how they are is going to be, that's going to determine my success. So, I mean, we can basketball success. Yeah, there are, you know, there's, there's, there's ways you can measure that with wins and losses, with growth, with shooting percentages, with defensive stop percentage and all that stuff. And that's stuff that we'll do. We're not going to ignore that part of the game or the coaching, but uh, true success, I really believe is going to be uh, how I how I can uh, impact the, my players into being better people. So I won't see that. I won't see the, the growth from those seeds that I plant until long time down the road. So I hope I'm here for a long time. Yeah, well, you can definitely see someone planted them in you a while back, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. is, there, is there kind of some core values that uh, you're thinking about there or you kind of led you along this line? Yes, uh, without a doubt. So our we got three main core values uh, that kind of define everything that encompasses our basketball program. So I'm talking – not just the stuff that we do on the court, but how we practice, how we how we talk to each other, how we text, message, how we do things within the community, uh, everything. And uh, there, it's selflessness, uh, service leadership, and then the third one is just to do the work. Um, and the, the do the work one, I really just uh, stole that from uh, Buzz Williams, he's Texas a and basketball coach. Um, Really great guy. If you ever, you ever want to just listen to someone inspire you, just listen to Buzz Williams talk. I mean, he's, he's, he's a great time. Uh, but he went on his big rant after a game about how the joy is in the work. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're going to judge, if you're going to judge your fun that you have and you're going to judge, judge your, you know, how much enjoyment you get of something by wins and losses, then you're, you're failing in some way because the enjoyment should be coming from the work, from going to practice. The best time should be, you know, that, that two and a half hour weightlifting session, you know, that that's the fun part. The games are great. And that's where you get to show everybody what you've been doing and everything. But the work itself is the, is the most fun part. So, and, and, and to, and to make it fun and to enjoy the, the grind. Cause I, I, I do personally. I lost you a little bit there. The last second, what the last part of what you said there, we lost. <laughs> Um, I said I had to throw in, that's why I had to throw in that enjoying doing the work part because of that, you know, the grind is super fun. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, with the crazy year that we've had to say the least, you know, how have you been able to do the work, as you say, you know, what have the, the what has the team been able to do? Man, it's been, it's been weird. <laughs> we, yeah. uh, we, we got to do some summer workouts. So we normally have, we, we call it summer ball. Um, we get all month of June to practice a few times a week and we play games two times a week. And then we go to some weekend tournaments and camps and that all got canceled. Um, and then we got, we got a few, we got about a month, month and a half of summer workouts in, but again, they were just, everything spaced out, use your own basketball, had to be outside. Um, we were actually at the playground at the green courts uh downtown by you know by the uh crud i don't remember what that place is called they're the green courts is what I, they call it like the forest the fantasy forest maybe something like that oh yeah about the park the pavilion something yeah yep yep yeah so we had we had uh i think three hour blocks where we'd go there in different uh groups and spread ourselves out and try to try to do some workouts like that and um and then we got to do conditioning uh, we had to do open gyms the in the fall. We got to do some four man workouts and stuff. Finally, get to, got got to get in the gym, and then uh, we did our two weeks of conditioning, and we got done with our conditioning. And three days later, we we got shut down, and and here we are.
hopefully yeah. we're going to start up here on the 16th. Um, but we've actually been doing, um, been doing some online practices, uh, which is different, uh, but you know, it's something. So it's still, it's still enjoyable. We're mainly, we're focused on the, the culture uh, of our program. We, we, I call them classroom modules is what happens is we get on a zoom and, um, we talk about leadership, holding each other accountable, um, reminding each other of what's right and wrong, how we do things, how we present ourselves. Uh, and then we, you know, we're just now getting into the, with these next two weeks of the, how we're going to play the style of which we're going to do things and how it has to change and all that kind of stuff. So it's been a blast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I, I can imagine it's a nightmare, but uh, hopefully we're getting closer to uh, back to normal. We'll see. But uh, yeah, you know, so well, I've seen a lot and seen a lot on Twitter and kind of talked a lot about with your t-shirts and stuff is this called a one team, one family message. And, uh, you know, sure love to hear what you, what you think about that or what the thought is behind that. All right. So this is kind of, there, there are certain coaches and I, that doesn't mean it doesn't mean that they're wrong for it or anything. It just, I, I have a belief in what I do. I have, I think about things a lot before I met, decide to do them. And this one team, one family uh, has deep meaning and one that we define with our kids before they even try out. Um, before on our preseason meeting, I mean, you'll, you hear me say one team, one family and selflessness and uh, service leadership and things like that. I mean, we, we had, we had communication practice during, tryouts or not during tryouts during our uh, during our conditioning we, 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 teaching teaching them how to talk to each other through conditioning um because it's so important it's an important part about being one group um so this 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 one team one family is the thing that's going to stick with me some people change theirs each year you know it's uh, whatever their you know kind of their team mantra i guess you'd say but mm -hmm. this one won't change because it really defines what I believe is the most important part about being in a, in a team like a basketball team where you got 15 guys and only five can play at once, you know, um, it's, it's different. Uh, so we, we're, we're kind of all a part of our one team. Um, and that means from, from youth basketball down and I say down because in my mind, that's the top, the, the youth is the top of the, of our chain. We are the bottom. Um, that's, and that, again, that just goes back to my belief in service leadership. So from, from youth basketball down to middle school to freshmen down to JV and varsity, every single member counts and we need to be treating each other as though they matter, even though, even though they, we might not see the, the fruits of that labor until 15 years from now. Um, I, we're those, those high school boys. I remember when I was in elementary school, those high school basketball players were, I mean, they were everything to me. They'd come down and play pickup with us for 20 minutes, and I'd talk about it for, you know, 20 days. Um, it was – it's 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 amazing what we can do if we actually value every person and the, the people that want to be around. And it's just – that's that's it's why we – it's why we have the opportunity to be called ourselves varsity basketball players and varsity coaches is so we can turn around and serve and make everyone else's time better. Um, you know, if, if – and that the – from the beginning, we tell them, if you're not willing to do that, you're not willing to put the team, the whole team, the, the, the youth, the middle school, if you're not willing to put them first, then, then you're in the wrong place. Cause this, that's, that's what we're going to be about from start to finish win or lose. Um, and then the family part, that's the, that's the part that takes a lot of defining and, and, and it takes a lot of work. Um, you know, we're part of the family together. And in my mind, a family, is always going to want what's best for each other. Like, and, and no matter what, as a unit, my family is going to want what's best for me as a person. And they're going to want what's best for our family. They're not going to put one person's needs above everyone else's just because that person's a little needy. They're also not going to say, well, you're fine because you're too needy. Just go over there and be by yourself. There's a balance. And that's part of being in the family. We got to treat each other with love and respect and honesty. Um, everything that we do has to come from a place of love. Like I'm holding each other accountable, having conversations that are difficult about difficult stuff, difficult topics. There's been a lot of that already with, with COVID and kids talking about how they, if they were going to be uncomfortable if certain kids did, did or did not have a vaccine with, 
with uh, the racial injustice stuff that was happening this summer like crazy. And we were having workouts and all in the middle of this. And we had kids going to marches and kids decided not to. I mean, it was, it was a weird time, but because we had that respect and love for each other and we were willing to just put it all out there and look at each other, you know, with our chests out and, and say, this is what I think and this is why. And I respect you for being different and that's okay. Um, and I truly believe, and as a coaching staff, we've had long conversations about this. If we're willing to do that and put ourselves in those positions to have those conversations and to front load with all that work, then we're going to actually push our, ourselves to be better people and to be better teammates and to achieve more on the court and off the court. Um, it, again, it's harder work, but it's, that's why, that's why we put do the work into the, one of the core values because it's stuff we enjoy doing. Well, wow. seems like, uh, you know, they couldn't get a better year to have these type of core values and, uh, you know, those, this type of team thing going on with so much happening. It's, you know, something's really going to help them, I'm sure. You know, I'm, oh. yeah, for sure. I, I, I'm more of a golfer and a swimmer. So, uh, you know, basketball, I love to play as a kid, but it's not really my thing as far as, you know, X's and O's and certain styles, styles of play. Is that something you want to share with us or is that more top secret type of stuff? Oh, nothing secret about it. We're going <laughs> to, well, like I said, basketball is a game, a game that changes in the middle of the game, even in the middle of the play that will change. So I can, in terms of what we're going to do, we're going to do whatever we can do well. And especially with it only having six or seven weeks of competition, and trying to fit in 12 to 18 games in those, that's a, it's, it's a lot of evaluating and just figuring out what we can do and making what we can do, what we do well, and what we can't do, um, cover that up. And, and, and because there's not going to be, we talked about this today, we actually had an, an online uh, uh, meeting today uh, for, for our group. And, you know, it's not going to be a year where you're going to see this player go from, a 15% three-point shooter to a 30% three-point shooter in, in six weeks where you're playing three games a week. That's not, it's not, it's not realistic to expect that. We can't, we don't have that much gym time. We don't have that long of a season. Um, but we're, we're going to run motion offense and that motion is going to be different depending on who's in the game. It's going to all follow the same basic like rules. Um, but if I'm teaching them how to play correctly and they're learning correctly and we're all holding each other accountable for what we can and cannot do well. We're going to put ourselves in the best position to win. If I don't tell them, you got to go stand here and set this screen like this. And that, you know, they need to be able to play. Uh, so it's, it, it's, they got to earn that trust. You know, that's my, my expectation is that they will earn that kind of trust from me and from their teammates and they'll be able to go out there and put together a solid game. Um, and I believe in them. So that's, uh, that's what we'll do. We'll run, we'll do some man to man defense, of course. Uh, we'll throw in some zones and put, try to put ourselves in a position to, to win basketball games and be competitive uh, with teams that might be bigger, faster, stronger than us. So I, I, I describe ourselves like this. I'm in, a, I'm in a, a, a couple different coaching communities where we bounce ideas off each other. I don't want to say that our team is average because it's not, that's not it. It's just that we're, we're definitely a weird, a weird hybrid group. We don't have one monster kid. Don't have we're we're not super tall, we're also not super short. Um, we're not blazing fast, but we're definitely not slow either. So we're, we're going to have to play smart, and we're going to have to play selfless. And I, they're going to hear me say selfless basketball. The kids who the kids who can shoot really well should shoot a lot. The kids who can rebound really well should rebound really well. The kids who can play defense need to be working on defense. And the kids who can pass and be really smart and can communicate best should do those things. I mean, that's, that's just common sense for, I'm not going to tell you to go be a mathematician if you can't do algebra one, you know, <laughs> no one's going to tell me as an English teacher, Hey, you can go teach calc for me, please. I'll, no, thank you. I'll stick to English. I'll do what I do well. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of the, I don't know, common sense approach that I have to basketball. Well, hey, there's a, there sounds like there's a lot going on. It's pretty fun to see, you know, like I said, I, I'm not a, I have never been a big basketball guy, but I'm really looking forward to the season um, now, especially, you know, running the sports page, but also kind of, you know, seeing some of the things you're doing and, and talking about out there. I think it's just fun to see. So we really, I appreciate it. I think others will too. And, uh, you know, we, we're wishing you the best of seasons and, 
even if it's a short one, it's going to be exciting and uh, in the, the future as well. So yeah. Yeah. Appreciate thank it very you. much. Coach way. We thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. And Hey, how's, uh, how's swimming going? I mean, uh, are you guys, are you guys sw still swimming? Uh, we're on, we're on pause. We got paused with most everyone else. We were swimming and uh, I, I think we're hopeful that the 18th we'll be able to start our, our second, our winter session. You know, I, I don't think it's certain, but uh, you know, we take a lot of precautions. We do the things that we have to, to get it done. And uh, yeah, there hasn't been much competition or anything like that, but the kids are just happy to swim and uh, yeah. there's less, less kids in the lane and all that kind of stuff. As you know, it's, it's a big deal. So if we can do it safely, we're going to do it. And, and uh, that's what we're hoping that starts up pretty soon again too. So. Yeah, no kidding. That's yeah, awesome I, look forward part to, of that. I look forward to, you know, you being across the hallway. I go check you guys out once in a while while we're swimming. Yeah, this. yeah. Stop in and say, hey, there's always room for more. Well, I guess there, in a normal year, there will always be more room in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, because I'm excited about trying that trying that Dr. Dish thing. That looks like fun. It's sweet. I can't wait till we get that second one. It's, uh, we're, we're, I can't, I, I, by, and by the way, am I still being recorded? Yeah. Man. If anyone's watching this that 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 donated, participated, shared, whatever, thank you so much. I can't believe the amount of support that we got from that. Like it, during a year like like this, where we've had people lose their jobs, people have to get laid off and stuff, and then we raised two grand more than we raised last year. I mean, that's wow. that's awesome. I can't I can't say thank you enough to the people in our community and the outpour of support and love that we got. And I'm excited. I'm really excited for hopefully this summer even when we get to go to those uh those camps and really build our build our culture even more than just the season to do that stuff outside of outside of the normal season so that's i'm really excited for that yeah very cool to hear yeah well thanks again coach unless you got something to add we'll uh, we'll see you out in the hardwood no no that's it one team one family